I'm wasting fiber and we're at All Holden Day. I'm wasting fiber and we're on our way to All Holden Day. And I'm delighted about this. What I'm not delighted about is this traffic. Oh no. It's two kilometers away and it will take us 10 minutes to get there. It means we're going one-fifth of a kilometer per hour? Wait, no, one-fifth of a kilometer per minute. Let's see. No. We're not going very fast. I'm getting existential, Mad Skelly. Oh, crap. I'm going to forget all of these moments. Because nothing novel is happening. Nothing interesting is happening. But I'm on my way to a interesting and novel experience. So then the question becomes, if I could just delete this part of my life, would I do it? I don't think I would. It seems like life would get really short if you cut out all the boring parts. There's a lot of boring parts. It doesn't mean it's not worth living though, does it? People are walking faster than we are driving. Including five-year-olds. See you guys at the show. Well, there's always cool cars on the way to the car show. Look at that Holden wagon. Some kind of 80s Holden over there. Oh, look at that Holden Ute pickup truck HSV with red detailing all over it. Pretty wild looking. Oh, it's a Colorado HSV. What the heck is that thing? That's cool. I love the patina. Thank you. I guess it's just time to admit that I've started to embrace entropy. I like rust now. Everything around us is slowly falling apart anyway. Might as well just embrace it. Boing! Oh crap! We've stumbled upon the swap meet. Swap meets are interesting because you have a, a niche seller and you have a niche buyer and normally they would never be able to find each other. But on All Holden Day, they might be able to find each other. So there might only be one of a particular part left in the entire world. And there might only be one potential buyer for that part because there's only one person in the entire world that needs that part. And then they might find each other in an event like this. <laughs> then what do you charge at that point? It seems like you could charge a lot for the item. But at the same time, if you don't sell it to that person, you will never be able to sell it. For there to be a market price, you need a market. But good luck buyers and good luck sellers. May you find what you need and sell what you don't. Oh, look at this over here. Look at the back. You can see the patterns of where the water has rolled down over the letters and rusted. It tells a story. You can't fake that. What is it, a little Jimmy? Yeah, so yeah. that was on the way out. Yeah, I saw yeah. It. I was in the... And you were like, yeah, I've seen your show before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was in the brown Camaro. Nice, yeah. yeah. I love the Camaro. Thank you. Doris Roberts owned his Camaro. I'm like, I don't know who that is. He's like, I wouldn't expect you to know who it is. I'm like, why are you telling me? Well, it's the grandmother from Everyone Loves Raymond. It's your new room, baby. Oh. Wow, Grandma, this is nice. This is good. Hey, uh, Sophie didn't die in the bed, did oh, she? No. Good, good, good. No. She fell out of bed and died right here. Oh, we stumbled upon a building with vehicles and other things. Oh. You 
<laughs> is this a new seat, brand new, or is this vintage? Vintage. Because it looks vintage. I was going to say, if you guys reproduce this, man, those would sell. That is gorgeous. Tirana from back in the time when the inline sixes were beating the V8s around the track because they were lighter and they handled better. It's the 60th anniversary of the EH Holdens. I think there's a guy here today that has all of them in burgundy. And painted sign. You can tell because when it peels off, you can see the brush strokes. I think we may have found the cars. No, this looks good. I see. I see giant banners that say things like Monaro on them. That banner. Blind spot. Look over here. If you are an insurance company and you'd like to sponsor my channel, you can pay me to like your insurance. If you live in the USA. Buy one of these. Buy one of them now. They're going to go up in value later. I've heard that people from Australia buy Pontiac GTOs and import them back to Australia because they're so cheap in the USA right now. I've always loved the idea of a beige muscle car. It's the ultimate sleeper. I love the alternate color stripe surrounded by chrome on these. Look at that radio. Looks like they can pick up shortwave signals from Jupiter. Yeah. You had the state titles up at um <laughs> Yes, yes. Right, so it's good to see you made it here. I yeah, it. we've never been to this show. Uh, have you? No. Uh, I love it. Yeah. It hasn't been on since because of COVID and that and the floods we had here. But it wasn't on no. last year? No. Oh, okay. uh, This is the first year back, I think, after three years. I might be wrong. I love watching your program <laughs> here. It's awesome. Keep it up, eh? Thanks. We found the citrus-flavored cars. Orange on orange. Wow. That pops. Australia had two different shades of purple Monaros. Not just two different shades of purple or on two different cars. No, same car, two different shades of purple. Where it all began. W1. Well, we've seen one of these before. Maybe this one. There aren't that many. They're very rare. You don't see many in Australia. Like S3 or or anywhere. I got another W1. Haven't seen this one. We are in a period of transition right now. Cars were getting faster and faster and more powerful. And it got to the point where people that weren't intelligent or skilled were crashing these cars. So they started putting traction control to slow the car down. And with electric cars, that's just getting even more extreme. You have massive amounts of potential power, but you're not allowed to use any of it. So there was a peak there where you could have a car where you could actually use its power and you could hurt yourself if you wanted to. That's what I call freedom. That's what I call excitement. If the car protects you from every possible injury, what fun is that? Without risk, there is no reward. This is your risk and your reward. I'm pretending that I don't see the Sandmans. We have to iterate through the car show in a procedural fashion. We have to see things in order. We can't just skip ahead. This is not a Chevy because they would not have released a car in the U.S. in this color. That's the problem with the U.S. It's so boring and that's the coolest thing about Australia for me. Crazy car colors. Oh yeah, 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 totally, yeah. <laughs> They're bonding with cars with their dads. 
They're watching some of their favorite shows with Dad. And you're one of them. Or Dad's making them watch the show. They're like, oh, God, I don't want to watch Cars. I want to watch Pokemon. Look at this old beauty. Looks like it's all original. Check out the wheel skirts in the back. Here we go, brown muscle car. You look like you're on your way to work or on your way to the grocery store. And maybe you are, but it doesn't matter if you're running late. You'll be there on time. Well, that's the largest exhaust tip I've ever seen. Oh, wow. SV5000. If you're wondering how turbos work, well, this engine bay pretty much explains it. Okay, those wheels are gorgeous. I think there might be some metal on there that's not technically needed for functionality reasons, but they look great. It's a walkie. I'm learning Caprice Series 2 by Holden. We had a Chevy Caprice in the US around this time, but I can't tell you how boring they were. I almost feel like Australia appreciates even the luxury cars from this time, even the regular cars from this time. It could just be because Holden's gone. You're not gonna appreciate something until it's gone. Holden Director HDT. Is the owner of this one around? Right there. Does it have the crystals in it? Yes, it does. It does? Yeah. I've never seen these crystals. You have to look at that blue car over there. No, okay. That's my one. No, I'm actually showing the crystals off. Yeah. Does that have the Mine crystals? Have Mine's only got the hidden polarized. Oh, you have, yours has a hidden crystal. Okay. I'll show you. So you have some, some revealed crystals yeah. that you can actually yeah. see under the hood. Yeah. The marriage between Brock and General Motors began to hit a stormy patch or two when the Aussie sports hero and his friend Eric Dalka released this little gadget, the DB Energy Polarizer. The device is supposed to cure many ills in the normal road car. Let's face it, for $480 it should do something. The legend says, when the rocks are brought together, the diamonds inside them will glow. I've only heard rumors about the crystals. He puts these crystals into cars because he says it's going to somehow help the car go faster or perform better. And so, do you think that's possible? Definitely. So it's just a box that I don't know what... <laughs> well, it's a box that yeah. I've never seen before. There's the, there's the crystals, the polarizer crystals. There it is! Yes. It is! The crystals! Yes. Are these the original wheels? Yes, the original wheels. Those are so cool. Yeah, the and original so, And you said it was optioned with everything. With everything, optioned with everything. What is everything? Sky top sunroof, uh, shield trim from the Veil Group A Group 3 trim, uh, Peter Brock stereo. What made the stereo different? Oh, it's, I don't know, it just says Peter Brock on it. Full body kit. Full body kit. Front yep. Side the polarizer. Yeah, of yeah. course, yeah. Yes. See, I'm happy to find Definitely. that. Does the polarizer make a difference? Have you driven one oh, without yeah. the polarizer? Yeah, yeah, I have. I've got a couple of turbos. The polarizer does make it go faster. Well, there we go. Yeah, there you go. It's been proven. <laughs> yes, it does make we it We have go anecdotal faster. evidence, people, and what else do you need? I understand its power now. And you'll also notice, too, with the Calais, so the Calais all have the chrome trim. And all across that. That's very rare now, all the chrome yeah, yeah. stripping. So compared to a, like an, S, an SL, a lower base car, the Calais had rear headrest, 
obviously front headrest, chrome frame, chrome dresser, electric windows. So that that was quite big for the mid, you know, 1986, 87. And so like it's it's decked out. It's it's a luxury car, but it's also a performance car. Correct. It seems like correct, correct. It's hard to find a car like oh, that. Very hard, very hard. This man has great taste in shoes. Thank you. <laughs> quick Thank pick, you. quick pick. Yes. See, look, he's camera shy. Look how shy he is. HDT Magnum. Yeah. I haven't seen one of these before. Momo wheels. Statesman Magnum. Peter Brock. Only 103 built. I think Australia had a thing for luxury muscle cars. Oh, oh my goodness. Wow. SS Group A wagon? Massive turbo fan wheels. It's a modern wagon with HDT badges on it and retro stickers. It's customized to look like it comes from an alternate timeline. Just like me. Um, HDT Champion Series. So yeah, you could still get HDT to customize your car, even after they were no longer the official Holden customizer. It's that mystery car. We had trouble identifying this one. But it's at a Holden show, so. I think you were right, Matt Skelly. Isn't this the one you thought was a Holden? We saw it at Meatstock? I don't even know what that is. Yeah, I think because I saw inside the interior. It's all quite open. Yeah, I know about the interior ones. I just feel like I haven't seen a lot of Holden four-door hatchbacks. So when I saw this thing, I was like, I don't know what it is. It's a cruise. Holden cruise. Okay. <laughs> is it like the Chevy cruise or yeah, is that yeah, different? Yeah, yeah. Well, you from the states? Yes. Okay. Yeah, because. You just haven't got sedan. Uh, you only got sedans over there. Maybe that's what it is yeah. then. So it's like a Chevy Cruze but a hatchback. Yes. Oh my goodness. <laughs> okay, well that explains some things. That's so cool. Like it's a Chevy Cruze front, but I change it. I change a few little things. No, oh, you certainly did. Yes. <laughs> and that concludes the first row of the car show. And now a word from our sponsor. Well, that was quick. We don't have a lot of sponsors on this channel. If you'd like to sponsor this channel, send me some money. Send me a dollar. I'll, I'll let you have one second of airtime in my commercial break. Your bed is a car. Yeah, but it's a fucking sweet car. My roommate said they're going to get me rims for Christmas or a CB radio. I can talk to other car beds. So we've seen about 10% of this now, I think. It's, it's already noon. We're in trouble. We, we're not managing our time very well. We're getting a bit too excited. We need to be more stoic about the cars. It's just like, oh yes, a Holden, a Holden, a Holden. Let's proceed to the next row. Holden. So many Australian cars look like American cars, but shrunk down to about 75% size. Station sedan. Original paint. I was noticing these things that to keep the rain out. Yeah, wind, wind yeah. It's like you don't have air conditioning, I guess. Yeah, well, it's a forced air conditioning. Yeah. You get the forced air through the center valve. Oh, yeah. Okay. There we go. But well, like you're in it's... dusty roads, that keeps the car pressurized a little bit and keeps the dust out. Yeah, and when it's raining, though, it's not like you can turn on the air conditioner so you got to still be able to open the windows and that's kind of what I was assuming that's to help with this all just looks like it's original it is I've kept it as original as possible how long have you had it for well, nearly 30 years 30 years teal blue what happened to you some kind of cool ute here GTS GTR XU1 Inline six supercharged. Should probably check out the bed. There's some knitted Holden pillows back there. Not the most efficient use of space. I don't think you really need to have your cow skulls with you at all times. What the heck is this thing? 
Holden Gemini. He's got a full of old memorabilia from the time. Purple SS Group 3. Look at these HDT Commodores. This is a time when the USA had just given up on performance. Walkinshaw W375 SS. Okay, we found the Sandmans. Yeah, for sure. So, um, when we do... Yes! Got the board day. It is me again. Howdy. Yeah. <laughs> I think I've seen most of these. You haven't seen that one. I haven't seen this one here? No, that's my wife's one now. Okay. She's got the holes and I've got the forwards. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Bit of a, bit of a noise at night when oh, you're yeah. fighting. If they're fighting, yeah, right. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Uh, it was purple and green. I love those colors together. And a modern one, green with orange stripes. Holden Grange. I I don't know what this is. This is HSV WK Grange 2003. Oh, look at this beauty. Some hand painted lettering on here, too. The original paint. It says it's been restored. Yes. But it's looking very original. It is very original. So it is, it is a tasteful restoration. It's uh, sympathetic to its age. It's um, trying to preserve it and also preserve it. There's a hot pink Tehran over here. I know it has an actual color name. I can't remember what it is. Panther pink or something. Oh, this is the one we, I think it is the one with the pink panther on it hood. We've seen this one before. It's a pink Holden. I don't know if it was a factory color. I'm hoping someone will tell me. It's beautiful. Pink car, I know. Isn't that cool? It looks like the paint tells some stories here. Yeah. What's the, what was underneath it there, or what's? what's no, it used to be at a um, a farm, and he used to cart hay and stuff around the farm, and he had signage. But I got it, and the signage was off. Okay, so it so used yeah. to have some signage. Signage over it. on it, yeah. Okay. Yeah, but uh, since then, like um, someone's run into it at the back. And it hit the motorbike at the front, and yeah, just the drama, mate. So it's been through some things. It's been through the wars, my friend. Got like some pinstripes going on here, yeah. looks like. Yeah, I think it's got the same on the other side, but you know what? Um, I haven't washed it for four years, uh -huh. and I washed it that, or well, I didn't wash it, but the guys washed it for me on uh, Friday, and then I started noticing stuff. I've never noticed that. Not real wood. I've seen this one before. It's a woody, it's a wood-sided Holden. I think that's real wood and everything. Some of this is painted. Maybe a lot of it, maybe this is all painted actually. Actually pretty impressively, meticulously hand-painted fake wood. Better than just buying some vinyl stickers. Someone worked hard on that fake wood. Holden Berlina. Haven't heard of those. Everybody knows Australia's big on their utes, and that's what makes them distinct from the U.S. But sporty wagons. Hardly ever see sporty wagons in the U.S. And panel vans. It's a whole alternate universe. It's not just utes. Australia is full of unique things that you've never seen before. Oh, we have something interesting over here. Looks kind of like a Subaru with a Holden badge. Cross Track Adventra LX6. Never seen one of these before. Oh, we got a Senator over here. I haven't seen too many of these. 
HSV 255 LS1. Wow, those wheels. Hot pink ute. Girls can own tough cars too, it says. Chicks drive utes too. This one has a mixture of real patina and fake patina. Lately, I'm drawn to the rusty ones. I love that you can see the rust on all the little character lines. Why do they love the old one? So, Everyone does. Every car's got a story. I spend all that time on that and he gets more photos than I do. Yeah, don't, don't do anything at all. Just leave it. There you go. That's your story. But if you keep it original, it'll just rust away and there won't be anything left, you know? So at some point, at some point you gotta do something to bring them back. You repaint it, you make it perfect, and you start all over, give it another 50 years, and it looks like that all over again. Oh yes, here we go. It's the Ford Burgundy E.H. Holdens. These all belong to one guy. We got the sedan, we got the ute, we got the panel van, we got the wagon. So these are all four yours. Yep. Yep. Are they all 1963? For uh, the number plate, yes. Okay, so about so 1963. Technically, no. Okay. But, yeah, but if you go by the number plate, the red goes, yes, they are. Yeah, and so they're all 60 years old. It's the 60th anniversary of the yep. EH yes, Holdings. Yes, and so is this something. like one of each kind? Is this that the is idea? One of each of the body types. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. so you've got the sedan, the ute, the panel van, and the station wagon. Yeah. And that's that's the, the X Factory. Body types, yes. Yeah, yeah. And, I, and I understand there's one that you're still in search of. Still in search of my dad's car. Yeah. So that's what I'm how, how will we know it if we find it? Oh, no, boy, shows the number. EH18423S. If you have seen this car, okay. you can contact me, yeah. wastelandfirebird at gmail.com. I was having an event at Kilimanjaro, and I, I heard your, you got a very particular voice, <laughs> I heard you go past, and I know that's that. because I'm always you're shouting you're at the camera. This has been All Holden Day outside Sydney, Australia, where we learn that just because you got a little bit of rust on you, it doesn't mean you can't be loved. I'm Wasteland Firebird. Thank you for inviting me into your home or onto your portable device. Have a good night. Thanks to Mad Skelly for the camera work. Dinner! <laughs> Adios, turd nuggets. <laughs>